Let's see the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We sincerely apologize for the breaking transmission. Uh, but we're here with the breakfast and uh, we just quickly run through the concerns with the increase in COVID-19. We have Dr. Tui member Wondu who is in the studio with us this morning who shares thoughts and uh, we see what we can do in order to protect ourselves and stop the spread of this virus. The Nigerian Center for Disease Control has again warned of possible fifth wave of COVID-19 virus in the country. Given the uh, increase or reappearance in the number of confirmed cases, it disclosed that about 1,332 cases were recorded in one week. It therefore called on states to wrap ramp up testing as it asks Nigerians to embrace safety protocols to cope the spread of the virus. As of July 2022, 22nd, 2022, Nigeria has recorded no fewer than 260,339 confirmed cases, while 253,566 cases have been successfully discharged. 3,147 uh, lost your lives to complication arising from the virus. As of Friday, the World Health Organization reported that there were over 565 million cases globally, out of which over 6.3 million persons lost their lives. About 9,181,118 cases had, however, been confirmed in Africa. Uh, once again, we have a public health practitioner, Dr. T. Member one do joining us. I hope I got your name correctly. <laughs> Good morning, Nessie. Good morning, Doctor Tui. But what does this make? Uh, uh, what does this mean with this increase and all of the statistics? What does this mean for Nigeria and her citizens? Uh, it's coming back home um, to remind us that um, COVID is here with us, and it's probably going to be here for some time. And then um, that there's no reason we should relax our preventive measures. Um, like you already pointed out, um, 500 million cases worldwide, uh, 6 million, more than 6 million deaths. And we have, uh, we have um, given about uh, 20 billion doses of vaccines. Still, the virus is with us. The Omicron variety of uh, strain, um, especially the BA5 strain, is actually causing the new epidemic. And then um, we in Nigeria, we chose to Put, put down, you know, um, our guard. We we are not social distancing. Vaccines uh, in Nigeria is just twenty percent. People are not being getting vaccinated. They abandoned the non pharmaceutical interventions. The conversation around COVID has actually shifted away from the public space. The incident officers moved away from governor to nobody now. And rather, if you look at our public space again, where should be talking about health, especially. Well, we're having, you know, uh, monkeypox, Marburg virus, Lassa fever, all of them combining together um, in, in, the, in the world now. We are not discussing health. What are we discussing? Rather, uh, my religion is better than your own. Uh, I want to become this, I want to become that. And then, of course, we, we see that the public space to uh, fake news, paid news, and all sorts of social media rants. Um, we are not communicating, we are not discussing it. We are about social distancing. Government moved away, people are not getting vaccinated. And uh, should the thing come back, it's going to meet a broken health system. And then what do we do in this situation? Well, it's now left to the government and the individual to figure out, especially individuals, to figure out what they need to do uh, not to catch the, the virus. Um, Dr. Tuyu, you talked about coming back, does this mean that, you know, COVID had gone before now? Because, uh, you know, once upon a time, we also saw that mm -hmm. countries of the world, including the United Kingdom, had relaxed, you know, restrictions and all the paths. And then Nigeria also followed suit. So was there a time that COVID left? Not really. Uh, it's just a time that we refused to pay attention to it. It was just a time that um, we abandoned and really, you know, get stuck to our wishful thinking. Uh, we don't have the kind of health system they have, but we just look for opportunity. Of course, the, the COVID gave us a unique opportunity to rethink our health system and actually step up some key preventive measures, you know, like even for us, school hand washing, hygiene, but look around us, look at the health system, look at everything, nobody's talking about it. So COVID never went away. It's just like saying that has not ever gone away or it has gone away. So there's a time of flare-ups, and this is one of the flare-ups. And then the, for the fact that the virus is capable of multiple mutations, we don't know the next mutation. People are considering 
what effect will Lassa fever and COVID have together? The other question is that what effect will monkeypox and COVID have together? So there are a lot of uncharted terrains in this, in this discussion. Um, and the best anybody could do, you know, um, any country could do is to figure out how to protect its citizens. Of course, we still know that if you vaccinate, we, you don't forget we have never got to that herd immunity that we've been shouting about. We've just done 40 percent. We're looking at herd immunity as from 50, 60 percent. We've just done 20 percent. 20 percent of Nigeria vaccinated, okay, fully vaccinated. So we are now apathy has set in, and in fact, people are not even the distrust is even increasing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough situation, but we keep talking about it. But at, at individual level, what we can, the best we can do is to actually, you know, keep those uh, non-pharmaceutical protocols and hope that we remember those non-pharmaceutical protocols. All right, Dr. Tui. Um, another one that's been very big is the fact that, you know, in West Africa, some part of West Africa, well, to be precise, you have uh, Ghana here now, it's been, you know, a dictation. And the World Health Organization has confirmed the Marburg virus. And so... Uh, Ghana is very close to Nigeria, and we know that uh, there's been a lot of movement. Now, that's on the one hand. You also have that we're grappling with monkeypox, with Lassa fever. Do our health institution now, do you think that uh, we have what it takes to contain and manage all of this, uh, you know, challenges, health challenges that uh, we're faced with at the time? We're not even... We are not even strengthened enough to manage malaria, not to talk of this cocktail of viruses. And we, you know, severally on different occasions, we've pushed that we're going to see more of this virus coming up. We're not going to see less of them. I think the rational thing is for a country to figure how to increase surveillance and then, you know, push for um, strategic investments in health system that can respond to all these viruses. Um, of course, you know, climate is changing, you know, and then were encroaching on the terrains of these animals because who are the reservoir of these viruses. And then they also come into our, into, into our, into our abode. Lo and behold, increasing contact, climate change, neglect of health system, collapse health system will not bode well for any country, um, um, you know, with likelihood of a spark of this virus. So um, the threat is real and it's challenging, very real and challenging. It can be a wishful thinking that if you have Marburg, if you have Lassa, if you have COVID, if you have monkeypox. Now, recently, I mean, I said, was it yesterday or day for yesterday? WHO said this is public health emergency of international concern. That's how they declare the monkeypox after seeing, um, you know, 16,000, you know, uh, deaths uh, or cases, you know, as it were, 16,000 cases all around, all over the world, where they had expected there won't be any uh, monkey virus. And when they're seeing more in men, uh, you know, uh, having sex with men, you know, a, the, a new dynamics now coming. Come how is this virus being transmitted? And the virus can change their mode of transmission. And you have to be that alert. But if you don't have health system, you don't have surveillance system, you don't have health services for health, the people are strike, that's our strike, they are not doing research. <laughs> well, how do you now respond? Okay? So it's a pitiable situation and in such a way that. Um, a collapsed political system will always give rise to, to, to a warped health system, no doubt. If your political system is not working, your health system can't work, okay? Um, proper politics, good democracy, order, um, and, um, and, and law are actually a prerequisite um, to driving good health system. So we start by ordering our society. We start by putting the right investment in health. We we'll start by signaling and telling people, um, raising the conversation in the public space on what you should do to, to, to have good health. And Ghana is near to us. I can assure you, my bug is in Nigeria already. <laughs> With that confirmation <laughs> from the authorities. I can assure you. Again, what are, what, what, what are we confirming in the authorities? Because even though now we have genomic laboratory that can do a bit of things, maybe one or two in Nigeria, um, you only see what is searched for. Not that. Okay, so you're saying you only that see what you search for. Um, if you start searching for it, you start doing the panel to look at those virus that could be afflicting us now. I'm, I won't be surprised if you see my book there. But what's Ghana and Nigeria are just neighbor now. Mm. So it's just a matter of geographical definition. 
Um, these diseases don't know geography. They don't know that this is the limit of country. Mm. They don't have passports. You know, they move so around. just a quick one, because we're out of time. Uh, usually the response of government is that when we COVID, there's always, we know that there was a first wave and then we had lockdowns. We've had several lockdowns. What, what are you thinking now that you have the authorities saying that we probably might just be at the verge of a fifth wave? Uh, what do you think would be the response of the government? Yeah, same story, issue statements, count the numbers, and then um, look. What is, what, how are they going to respond? They don't look, they just, you know, and then encourage you to wear face masks, count the numbers, tell you the story every day. Um, we, we have moved from the government, because the government is grappling with a lot of things, financial challenge, security challenge, educational challenge, so many challenges. Here and there, and COVID will be one of the few things they will be so concerned about. They will be concerned only because it has international dimension and ramifications, you know, that kind of come back to hurt them. For that, they're not, I don't think the government will care. So let's move our response to individuals and the community where we can choose deliberately not to expose ourselves to any germs or, you know, um, at least deliberate, deliberate choice. Um, you know, avoid crowd if you can. If you, if you, if you can. Um, you know, people, the church people say now say that oh, you don't want them to go to church. Well, um, cover your nose, uh, your use of face mask if you can. Wash your hand, raise your hygiene, keep your environment clean. And when you fall ill, don't forget talk to a doctor. Mm. Or right, thank you so much. Uh, we have to bring the conversation to an end at this point. Uh, we appreciate your time, Doctor T. Thank uh, you member won't do for being part of the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, that's the size of it. We've been talking about uh, the fact that there's an increase in the cases of COVID. Authorities have raised concern, and we know that as a country, we're grappling with all the issues. I mean, there's still malaria. You talk about Lassa fever. Uh, you also want to talk about the monkey pox and even the threat that uh, it's a threat to us, uh, the outbreak of Marburg virus in Ghana. How do we cope? Well, it's very dependent on us to take responsibility for our health. Let's be constantly paranoid with, you know, personal hygiene. Wash your hands always. Keep your environment very clean. Wear your nose masks as much as you can to protect yourself and protect every other person around. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Ibopo. Have a fantastic morning. We'll come with the news at 9 o'clock. Stay with us.